right. Shalom, Ras Tafari. Greetings, this is Ras Yadinos Tafari. This is Wendem Yadin, the broadcaster of Ethiopian World Net, and we're here on the Facebook. So those who know about the Facebook here, we're, we're here on the Facebook. And we're looking at a particular um, comment that we actually saw, and I think our attention was pointed to it previously, that um, one whom we had um, liked his vids, some of the initial vids that he had put out, um, Omar Tobijah, right, or Tobijah, which is interesting because remember Toby and Tobia. But there's a couple of interesting uh, Tobias. So those are the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. Go and check out Tobijah. You understand? Check out Tobijah and Tobia, so forth and so on, because there's something in the name. You understand when you understand about the name. Even in our names, there's a positive and there's a negative when we're not rightly, um, when we're not on the right foundation. So here's a comment that was made from, I think, July uh, 29th at 9.31. I think so. At least this is what we have linked right here. A couple have liked it. I think we liked it also initially looking at it, though we didn't agree with um, certain portions of it, but this is one man's opinion, you understand. But now that we've checked out a little bit more from this um, individual, this brethren, I would say, in a limited way, because there's some denials of Yeshua, of Yesus, and denials of the teaching of his majesty, which cautions I and I to say, wait, does he... You know, is one on zeal or one has the knowledge of the Son of God? You understand? Remember what it says that we can be very zealous. So we like this brother's zeal. You understand? But now let's look at this comment right here because this comment we think was, you know, being pointed to what I and others have been saying. So let's go through this. Uh, call this part one. Right? It says, Hala Selassie. He says, Hala Selassie, Omar, says, is now 120. So now what? Are there still people waiting for him to return? Question. Stop making the Lord into an idol. This is the same thing that the Pope teaches. His majesty operated by natural means his entire life. And he said in numerous speeches that the supernatural is a false concept. Period. Haile Selassie did not disappear in 1974. He is not in the mountains of Lalabella, he is dead, according to the opinion of Omar Tabijah. But that takes nothing away from his divinity. All right, you know, um, there's a couple points before this that I wanted to comment on. But let me just go through it so those who haven't got to see this or heard this can hear it first and can check it out. Here it's on the Facebook, right? So it says, His Majesty is still God, the individual affirms. The flesh profits nothing and makes a quote to John 6 and 63. Haile Selassie was God. He says was, was past tense, right? Before he appeared on earth in 1892, and he remains God after his flesh passed away in 1975. Now, there's two points in here. This, this will be called point A, and this will be point B, or this will be point ha, and this will be point le, right? Um, Let's deal with point ha or point a first. He says, Hala Selassie is now 120, so now what? What are people, are there still people waiting for him to return? I haven't heard that anywhere in Rastafari. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard about that in Rastafari. What, what, what I thought it was and what I thought I heard is that it's for I and I to grow up. You know, saying? don't be children tossed and turned by every slight of doctrine or every craftiness of man and people, you understand, who because they're not squared on the foundation, you understand, because he says, so now what are people waiting for him to return is, are there any Rastafari waiting for Hala Selassie to return in, in, in that sense of return? It says, stop making the Lord into an idol. And that's true in Christianity and in many religions and maybe among some of the unstable um, uh, brethren and sisters in Rastafari, because they've come from other churches, denominations, and until they get the true Timherit of Nagusa Nagas, the true teaching of his majesty, then those old errors are not able to be um, either reformed, uh, remedied, uh, removed, or whatever has to be done, pruned, in other words. 
right? So he says that that's what the same thing the Pope teaches, but I don't see the fact that if he's speaking about the Abba Kedus matter, and he's going to come to something that links with it. But we're going to go just sentence by sentence briefly. So he says that's the same thing the Pope does, right? He says, His Majesty operated by natural means his entire life. And he said in numerous speeches that the supernatural is a false concept. So he said the supernatural, which is really biblically, scripturally, the spiritual. So the spiritual is a false concept. That's what the supernatural, above the natural, you know what I'm saying, is the spiritual. Now, if you're coming from a Gentile, white, western, mistranslation, King James Bible only, then there's a lot of errors there, and only being guided by the Holy Spirit will you be able to see through those particular errors. It seems as though this um, person's opinion, Omar Tobijah's opinion, is that his majesty only operated naturally and there was nothing that was above or beyond the natural. That appears to be a denial of the supernatural or the spiritual, right? So can you please point to these numerous speeches, right? Can you point them out, post them up here, you know, understand, and give reference so that we can look them up in, in third-party sources for ourselves? You know, and then you say right here that you operate by natural means. So... Both of these contradict the, the spirituality of his majesty. See, the divinity is not in the natural in the sense of that's where it begins. It begins in the spiritual. So there's some false concepts here, but I think it's on the part of the, um, you know, the, the opinion giver, you know, one who gives their opinion. This is their opinion. But now, to some, it appears that this is maybe doctrine. But so that you don't become deluded or deceived that this is doctrine, I and I have to speak. And besides, when we were recording the next vid, uh, this post came up and it basically knocked off that vid. And you can see where we was doing that and we couldn't get back to the page. So, you know, this was brought before I and I, so we'll deal with this. This comes to our doorstep, as it were. Haile Selassie did not disappear in 1974, says Omar Tabaija. He is not in the mountains of Lalabella, says Omar Tabaija. He is dead, says Omar Tabaija, but that takes nothing away from his divinity, says Omar Tabaija. Where's the scripture? Where's the doctrine? Prove this by the doctrine or the teaching, the tenherit of Negus Neges, by Tawahido. You know, and if you understand, if you don't speak the language of God, the royal Amharic, if, if you're not trusting the Holy Spirit to communicate this to you, then you're not going to really grow up. This is why in the previous portion from First um, Corinthians it says how we should be um, children in malice. You know what I mean? And getting angry or getting upset or, you know, pitching a fit or because somebody critiques you or criti criticizes. Because this might be seen, some pointed this out to I and I, like this one was critiquing what we posted about Lich Teferi and um, the 120th year and how that coincides with 2012. You understand? Some say that this might be a some sort of uh, tongue-in-cheek kind of comment. You understand to what we posted about Albert Caduce, the chess master, and Genesis chapter six, the Nephilim Wars, 2012, which is actually the B part. This is actually the B part of 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 of, of this one right here. Let's bring this one forward right here. Um, of this one right here of Albert Caduce, right? Of Albert Caduce, and we've receive confirmation and affirmation, trustworthy affirmation, that based on their testimony and based on what we know of the word, you understand, of the word, that we can confirm that this story and this testimony is true. We're not just believing this because we need an idol or something like that. This confirms what Rastafari have known all throughout the years when many Rastas who jumped up as zealous Rastas when they learned about the death or the alleged death or of his majesty, you know, Bob Marley said, Ja live. Yes, Ja live. Are they separating the Trinity? Are they trying to divide? You understand the Trinity? You understand? But because one don't recognize the divinity of the Son, you see, and this is what he does not recognize, and it's very clear in other teachings or other vids that he, he, he posts and he has posts that he doesn't recognize the divinity of the Trinity because he does not know the true teaching and he has not got into the God language, you know, saying where he can speak to God in the spirit and he denies the spirit, the spiritual, you know, saying now when Rastafari speak about natural, 
we, you know, we're talking about all the corruption that's going on with the nature, the artificial and the synthetic, getting back to what Jah created. But we speak of the Iret, you know what I'm saying, in the Patois, the Iret, which is another way of saying, for Rastafari speak, word, sound, and power, the spirit. But Marinya was speaking of the Menfes. So you're saying that it's Madsi operated by Sitratawi means, but not by Menfesawi means? Is this what you are saying? But please bring the numerous speeches where His Majesty says that the supernatural is a false concept. He speaks on false concepts of spirituality, emanation, theology, so forth and so on. He speaks on these other ways of looking at it which are wrong, and he also reveals his teaching, what he also practices, and what he also proclaims to us. And that's the foundation for us true sons and daughters of Rastafari. See, there are sons and daughters and there are creatures. Some can, a creature can recognize God, but the creature has not come into that sonship. You know what I'm saying? Because the only way to come into that sonship is through Yeshua. Yehovah. So he goes on to state, Omar Tabaja, that Halas Lassi did not disappear in 1974. Provide us proof, because we have proof from the brethren and proof from faithful and righteous Ethiopians that there were these disappearances. I mean, it's all very well noted. I mean, four priests did not get gunned down by the bodyguard who, who, who lost the body, you understand, of his majesty, the living body. Of His Majesty, they don't four don't get gunned down at at Caduce Estefanos Beta Christian. Have you gone there? Have you investigated? What evidence do you have? Because you're saying that everything that the Rastafari and the faithful Ethiopian and Hebrews you understand know and have affirmed is a lie, but you have not prevent, presented any evidence. You said that he is not in the mountains of Lalabella. How do you know? Mm -hmm. How do you know? There was a couple of brethren who actually met with Abu Kadus. I don't know if the other brethren who pointed out the Abu Kadus photo and gave his testimony was one of them, but this was revealed through even Sister Fanai, you know, Sister Sunlight of, of, of Sight Media, you know what I'm saying, and we can bring that brother in forward and bring his testimony forward so we can know these things. But even before we knew of Abu Kadus, you know what I'm saying, which is a, another fulfillment of the prophetic. Before we knew of Abba Kedus, before this revelation was revealed to us, we still said that Jah lived. You understand? And even biblically, he says, I am he who was dead, because they wanted to kill him. You understand? Like they wanted to kill Yeshua. They did not kill Yeshua. They did not murder him. He laid down his life. Let us recognize that. Now, look what just happened. The page, did the page just pop off? Okay, here we go. We're back on the page right here. All right, so it's bouncing around a little bit. All right, so he says that Hannah Selassie is dead. Now, even looking at the whole death scenario, right, they've announced this at least three separate times. The first set of bones were too large. When they first found the bones were too large. Various members of the royal family dropped out of that whole thing. Others who were part of the Crown Council and maybe had more sway and maybe looked at it as a political move when Asa Wilson was proclaimed emperor in exile to bring him back in, but Nellis and Nawi didn't really go for that, and they said you could come back in as a regular citizen. And that was the third so-called, um, we got the bones, and we're going to bury it. You know what I'm saying? But, but that evidence right there you really need to get into, because the bones being too large and having either gold teeth in the mouth, and one knew that his master did not have gold teeth, in his mouth, you know, because we see him speak, so forth and so on, and there's no gold teeth in his mouth, and we know what his approximate height is, so why would he be a taller size? So, so much of that evidence is inconsistent, that we can hold faith, you know what I'm saying, that Jah lives, you know what I'm saying, but yes, they did want to put him to death, and they did announce the whole death scenario, you know what I'm saying, but that does not shake I and I faith. But when you say, when you say, Omar Tabaj, or others like you who may agree with your opinion, say that he is dead and that takes nothing away from his divinity, by what? By what do you prove that? Can you prove that by the very teachings of his majesty, by the true teachings of the true church? You know what I'm saying? The Tawahido. You know what I'm saying? The true, we're not talking about building, we're not talking about just orthodox, we're talking about the true teaching. You know what I'm saying? Because we have to contend uh, vigorously contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Th this true faith, this true imnet, this true hymenote, this true retua hymenote, and that's the God language thing. We're all growing. 
through the Holy Spirit. But do you deny the Spirit? You say that His majesty is still God. The flesh profits nothing. John 6 and 63, but you do not affirm the Spirit. And if you wanted to put a verse in here, you often say that even though they said he was dead and even if he was dead, he still lived. We, we affirm that right there because Christ said, nobody take my life away from me. So saying that Christ was murdered, it, it, it contradicts true, the truth of the word because he says he laid down his life. He laid down his life. Yes, it was their intent, but he did it of his will. They didn't take nothing from him. Let's understand. They didn't take the empire from him. They didn't take nothing. He stepped down. He dismantled it. You know, then fulfilling the book of Donnell. You know, was, but that's another teaching there. You say, Hala Selassie. Hala Selassie, we know him as Hala Selassie I or Hala Selassie I. You know, was saying, or Kedamawi, Hala Selassie. Remember, brothers and sisters, there was another Hala Selassie during the time of the fascist invasion who was like a Judas, a traitor. There was another Hala Selassie. So maybe this one's talking about some other Hala Selassie. You know, was saying, let's give due respect to our father. But we don't see that you really have received that sonship. Because the only way to get that sonship is through Yeshua HaMoshiach. The word says so. You can't, you can't skirt around that. But you said that he was God before he appeared on earth in 1892. So where was he? Mm-hmm. What is God? It, it, do you affirm that God is a spirit and that God is the spirit of truth? So thus we also have God when we have that spirit of truth and not our own opinions? You understand, beloved? So he says the Holy Selassie was God before he appeared on earth in 1892. We can agree with that for what we know of the teaching of his majesty. He said he remains God after his flesh passed away in 1975. What's the proof that his flesh passed away? Because that goes against the very word where it says he would not suffer, you understand, his holy one to see corruption. Thus we have Abu Qadus. You know that psalm right there. You know, but so... This is why it says that a novice or somebody who is just zealous, you know, the zealous bring a lot to it. And when we see a young brother in or a young sister in zeal, that is very good. But you need to get, you know, you need to get knowledge, the knowledge of the Son of God. Because before too long, you know, Satan is going to try to snatch that word out. And you think you're still affirming the truth, but according, you're not checking, you're not checking it with the foundation. Right? You're not checking it to the foundation. Let's go on right here with the part two. If we can, right here, what you said. Omar Tabijah, beloved brethren, you understand, the one who, you know, we know has the zeal, but we, we, we beseech, you understand, to, to, to humble thyself and to get the knowledge of true teaching. It's not us saying what we want to say, but what the Word has convicted I and I of in spirit and in truth, right? So if this is your own opinion, well, you, you know, every man got the right to decide his own destiny. But if you're teaching this for doctrine, you know what I'm saying? If you're teaching this for doctrine, let us recall what the Word says in 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy um, chapter 1, verse 7, where there's, you know, many of those who desire to be teachers of the law, of Torah. You know But we have to make all things be done decently and in the shar'at. Understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Because you're denying the supernatural, so what... What is the spiritual if not the supernatural? See, if you're in God language, Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 9 to 10, he would turn to people a pure language. The Irish is not that pure language. That was the code. Don't you understand? That was the code that we use, you know what I'm saying, among I and I selves before it got out in the records and music industry to everybody. You know what I'm saying? But now we move up to the higher level, to the royal Amharic, because of the book of the seven seals. Verse 8 says, but we know... We know, we don't believe, it's not our guess and it's not our opinion. We know that the law, right, that Torah is good if a man use it lawfully. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we know that, that his majesty is God if they know it in God's way, not in their own way. You know what I'm saying? They know it the way God teaches, the way he affirms it. You know what I'm saying? So please show us the numerous speeches where he says the, su the supernatural is a false concept. You know what I'm saying? Um, the se second part down here, um, Omar says, why are some people quoting Genesis 6 and 63? You notice that right there? You notice that right there? This is why I'm going to pay attention. Why are some people quoting Genesis chapter 6, verse 63? 
Well, you're the only one who must be quoted in Genesis chapter 6, verse 63. You know what I'm saying? Because um, I don't really see in my Bibles, uh, is it chapter 6, 63? I mean, come on, don't make me, don't, don't do a head fake. Make me look. You know, like Nas and them talk about, you made me look. You know what I mean? Don't be doing that ghetto stuff. You know what I'm saying? You make me look, right? So, so let me look. I'm in chapter 6, verse 60. Oh, nope, it's 22. 22, the Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Be a Hebrew. Don't, don't get mixed up with Gentile, white, Western concepts that we're struggling against because you recognize part of the vision. Part of the vision, you know what I'm saying? But you don't keep beholding. You, you run off in zeal. You understand? That's why we have to read over again um, Matthew chapter 13 when it's about the seed, the sower, and the seed is the word, and how one's going to have the right foundation. Don't till their soil and gain the right foundation, the right discipline. You understand? Satan can snatch it away. The kids of the world can distract ones. One might have no root in themselves, no groundation in themselves. Mm -hmm. So they get puffed up off of the little bit of knowledge that they know. You understand? And then, you know, like, I, I hope the brethren take this rebuke, you understand, as a brethren. You understand? Like it says that, you know, if you, rebu if, you, if you rebuke a fool, he will hate you. So I don't want I and I, brother, to hate I and I, because it's going to hurt him. You understand? Um, but if you rebuke a wise man, you understand? You, you know what I mean? You, you, you gain. You understand? You gain truly, you know, a wise man will love you, you understand, for a rebuke. But right here... 663, you understand? Know I know what I was going to say to you. I, I might put this out. Don't find no 663. So are you going to acknowledge that, that, that you, you might have made a mistake here? And if you made a mistake here, no doubt you might have made a mistake somewhere else. We're not saying where, you understand? Well, we have said where. But we're not just saying here or there, but we're pointing to this one, 663. Mm-hmm. You must mean 6 and what, 3? Are you talking about six and three? Is it six and three? Let's see if it's six and three. Let's go look again. I mean, we have a good idea what it is, but it's always good to look. You know, if you think you stand, it says, check yourself, lest you fall. Now, it's verse three. It's the warning. The warning of Jehovah. Jehovah, or the warning of Yahweh, of he who will be who he be. Some say, no, uh, Yahweh. Y-H-W-H is I am that I am. And you ask them, do you speak Hebrew? Have you studied Hebrew? They'll be like, not a little bit or whatnot like that. Well, why you say that? Then they'll point to the part where it says I am that I am, but it's really Ehia, Shadah Ehia, Ehia, Asher, Ehia. You know what I'm saying? So you have to understand that th these things concerning language, check out what we posted about the church in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 for this uh, 45th uh, Shabbatical, right? But you said, so why are people quoting that? You don't want to be quoting that. You know what saying, 6663. Six, six, if somebody don't know what you're saying, they checked it out. They'll just know that what you're saying must be false or falsified somewhere. You know what saying, because of this. But you're quoting really 6 and 3. And this is what you are quoting. You know what I'm saying, nobody's quoting 663. Six, so you have an issue with what we put up there about Lich Teferi and the 120. But um, Yahweh said, or the Lord said, or Egizi Abeher Lotusib Hat, to him be the praise. He said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. End quote. You say, Omar says, this scripture is not even talking about God. You're a liar. You're a liar, man. I got I to say you're a liar because why would it say then the Lord said? So who is the Lord? The Lord is not God here? He's not talking about God? So what is God talking about? He says, okay, you say, well, he said, it's not talking about him, but he said, well, he said what? My spirit. My spirit should not always do what? Strive, be, dwell. It's not strive in the other way. Go look up in the Blue Letter Bible. We showed you the Blue Letter Bible. Go look this up, and then you can look up what that word is in the Hebrew and what that word means and can get at least a basic foundation. Study and show yourself approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed. I think some of the work you was doing and still I think is, 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 is good and is upful. But on these levels of false doctrine, don't be zealous and, and lack that knowledge of the Son of God, right? Because then you, you're saying things that may feel right to you, but you're going in another spirit, right? So you're saying the Scripture is not even talking about God. It is talking about how God is angry. So you sound like it's not talking about God. It's talking about God is angry. So it's not talking about God. What are you saying? With the sons of men. 
Who's this, oh, so who are the sons of men? If not I and I, the sons of Adam. We're the sons of Adam. You see, we have to get out that era of Adam by getting into and putting on crystals, putting on Christ, putting on the true Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know what I'm saying? Being in his word. You're saying, so what does this have to do with Hala Selassie becoming 120 years old? We don't speak about Hala Selassie becoming. We even said theologically that is, that is an error right there that Hala Selassie was born. If you look at it from a strict theological perspective. You understand God winks at the times of ignorance, but he calls all men, right, to repentance. As he sends forth ones to bring forward that illumination, that clarity, that correction, that evidence, as he has sent I and I and others forward, right? So what does this have to do with really Lich Teferi as everything? 120, 2012, don't you see the famine coming? Don't you see where we're at right now? This is another prophetic moment for us to build up ourselves, to grow up. You know, to grow up. You see, if you're studying in the Word, then the Word, the Holy Spirit. But if you deny the Spirit, you understand that you deny your own salvation. If you're teaching that, then you're teaching damnation. And you're not in the grace of the King of Kings and His Christ. So you say nothing at all. Well, this is just one person's opinion who basically told us to look at the 63rd chapter, the 63rd verse of chapter 6. You know, so this is just a, a first word, you know, a first word on this particular um, um, situation of, of doctrine, of false doctrine creeping in. You know, and we as the watchmen, we are the, um, the, the, like the householders, we who have a stewardship ha have to be on point about this and to even rebuke or correct in love. Now, nothing that I've said here. It is really personal to this brother, and I, I don't know him personally. I can't say anything personal about him. I'm not going to do an ad hominem attack against him, but it's against what he's saying right here. I do agree that many people are looking, because of the lack of, of, of the knowledge of the Son of God, you know what I'm saying, who is our door, you know what I'm saying, to the Father, so we can grow up, so we can once again be restored to our divinity, you know what I'm saying? In the divinity of the Father, because we are his children. So that's why we are sons of God. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I said when we taught on the sons of God part, it's how we as sons of God were turning astray in that day, in that time. You know what I'm saying? That's why he said his spirit would not always dwell with man. But King James fools you here in the translation when you see strive. You know what I'm saying? Strive with man. You think it means strive like elsewhere in the Bible. And unfortunately, it does not mean that. Now, we're gonna, we haven't checked out the 42 other comments that others have given. You know, some probably agree with this. You understand? Because you, you remember when we taught that there's a difference between the sons, the children, the true children of God, and those who are creatures of God? A creature recognizes its creator. You understand? But a, a, a son or a daughter recognizes its father. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you have to understand what sonship is all about and the connection with Yeshua HaMoshiach, who truly is the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Or Adonai. Remember, Lord is the position of a son whose father is king. So if Christ or Yeshua, yes, with Jesus, spoke of his father, our father, you know what I'm saying? The father was always king. That's why when they elected a king or had a king for Israel and chose... Um, the Spirit of God chose Saul. Um, Samuel was very, the prophet Samuel was upset because God had always been the king of kings. But men and people were looking at other kings. You know what I'm saying? So God had to come forward or manifest his spirit in the flesh. You know what I'm saying? Which is supernatural in and of itself. It's natural, but it's supernatural. Like we talk about physical and we talk about metaphysical. Everyone knows that Rastafari, the true ites, of Rastafari is when we can understand these things metaphysically, but in the decency and the order. You know what I'm saying? Make, make all things be done decently and in order because he is not the author of confusion. You know what I'm saying? There's confusion in this because you're saying this but not presenting any evidence of this. I mean, evidence that can't stand up, and you're not even addressing the evidence of the brethren. You know what I'm saying? The evidence, and, the, and a lot of the evidence is very convincing. It's, it's more than just um, coincidental. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's the coincidental evidence, but there's some very direct evidence, you know what I'm saying, um, that, that refutes what you're saying here concerning His Majesty passing away in 1975 or so forth and so on. But overstanding the metamorphosis, as it were, you understand from Kedamawi Kaila Shalase, you understand to Abba Kedus to Kedus Abba Tachin, is, is, is very important, and we need to have that groundation of the teaching of His Majesty, because only the groundation of the teaching of, of His Majesty that puts it into the proper, the proper context, you understand, the proper order, you understand, because we look at it from a white Western Gentile world. Um, perspective. We're not looking for Abba Kedus to come back in that sense. We are looking for to grow up. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're looking for that day and to hope to be prepared for that day every day. Because every day is a judgment day. That's why every day I and I watch and pray and we pray and work and we study to show ourselves approved understand to the spirit of God, you know what I'm saying, to God in the spirit, and the spirit of God, the spirit of his majesty, the irate of his majesty is true and faithful, and I don't think any true Rastaman would deny, you know what I'm saying, the spirit or the irate on that level, they might not check for the word spirit because of false whitewash doctrine, but they would not deny the irate, so this area that we spoke on, you understand concerning six and three is a very real thing, very real thing, which is, you know, which is happening. You know, some might say, oh, they're just making this up. Some things go beyond their ability to make up, but it's not that we trust any of these things. You understand in the sense of, you know, we trust like, like, like God is coming back in that, in that white Western Gentile sense. We know we have to grow up. You understand, we have to grow up. All power was given to Yeshua HaMoshiach. You know what I'm saying? All power. That's why he says he's with us. And if we keep beholding him, his word, in spirit and in truth, some of us get on the intellectual tip, and the intellect is very, you know, it's very good. It can be very useful, but it has to be tempered by the spiritual. You know what I'm saying? By the spiritual. So we're not talking about spookism here. Make nobody get it twisted.